All right, we're live. Hold on a few minutes here. While everybody's joining, I'm just going to polish one of our Tippies tips here with number 44 gel polish. And for those of you joining us this afternoon, I hope you're having a good day. I'm Natasha, Ugly Duckling Master Educator, and of course I'm joined with my partner in crime, Krista Claw. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, today we're going to be doing um, a really fun floral um, pattern design. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pattern design um, using our art gel because the deal of the month this month, I'm not too sure if you're aware, is actually 15% off, off of all of our art gels. So it's a great deal, especially if you are wanting to try them. Mm -hmm. um, this whole set was done with our art gels. And I did um, mix some custom colors with our art gels, as well as I used one of our gel polishes to mix a custom shade too. And I'll show you guys how to do that and how easy it is um, and how awesome our art gels um, cover and um, how great they are to work with. Okay, so for those of you just joining, I'm just putting, um, I'm gonna do two thin coats of our number 44 gel polish. It's our white gel polish on one of our Tippies tips here just as a base and today I'm going to be if you're wanting to follow along or if you're re-watching this video later I'm gonna be using our art gel today I zoom out a little bit so I'm gonna be using our blue whoops blue we're gonna be using black I'm gonna be using orange uh, where have I got here our green white and then I'm going to be using pink, but I just need to grab it. So we're using pink as well. Um, and I'm also going to be using our Ugly Duckling Gel Polish in color number 167, which is this beautiful, bright lemon yellow. Love that yellow. This is such a great shade. Super fun for summer. But I am going to tone it down. <laughs> but even though we tone it down a bit, it's still quite vibrant on the nails. So great for summer and we're also going to grab our um, no wipe top coat I, I decided ahead of time today I think I'm going to seal these with no wipe just because I find sometimes with certain designs it really makes the um, the detail pop and then um, I have on hand my tacky top and I'm going to use this to be cleaning my brush um, in between using my different colors of art gels just because these are quite pigmented um, I want to have always something on my palette that I can quickly just kind of um, get the excess product out of my brush um, with. Uh, just because um, for those of you joining or for those of you who may not have ever used our brushes before, we always suggest cleaning your brushes, especially your art brushes, with a little bit of tacky top or no wipe on a palette um, and just gently working the bristles through that um, fresh product. This will help pull any excess or residual product out of your brush and it will keep your brush from um, drying because acetone, alcohol, brush cleaners can be quite um, drying on the bristles and on the hairs and it can cause them to fray. Um, so by cleaning it with um, one of our top coats, it'll help keep that nice shape and um, keep, your, keep your brush in, in good shape for years to come. And always remember to carefully replace that lid. Don't just ram it on because I have ruined the brush by accident before by just quickly trying to push the lid on and sometimes you can bend the bristles backwards. Right? Yeah? That's good. <laughs> and I'm just going to let everyone know that we do have 12 colors in our art gels yes. all together. So all yes. 12 of them are on special for 15% off for the month of July. Thank you for mentioning that. No so problem. I'm just using a select few colors today, but we oh, do no. have, and we have three really beautiful, av um, part of the 12, there are three really gorgeous metallic um, glitter colors. Beautiful. Yeah, then we have rose gold, silver, and gold, and they are so beautiful to work with. Um, oh, sorry, I was talking too much. I'm just going to put one more coat of this on. Um, so while I'm doing this, does anybody have any questions? Any questions about any of our other products? How are you doing? Are you having a good summer so far? Crystal? It's been great. We've had nice weather. We had a little bit of a heat wave about a week ago, I think. Yeah. But we're thankful that the temperature has come down a lot. Yes. So it was, I, we, there was one day, um, we actually, I heard on the radio on the way home and believe me, I felt it, um, that we had never been that hot before ever here. And mm -hmm. I think it was like, it was 
in the 40s, I think, with the humidity and stuff, so it was really hot for us. Oh, hi, Allison. Hi, Natasha. Hi, Carla. And it's awesome, too, because we have some new neon gel polish colors, too, that yes. we just released. For those who maybe haven't seen. Yeah, they're beautiful. They're gorgeous. And we actually have... um. A great swatch video of um, our new neons on our Ugly Duckling YouTube channel too. So if you wanted to take a look at those, we have them swatched just over a clear nail. We have them over our new milky white, which is number 193, and then over our um, our regular white, which is number 44. So while my nail is curing here, I'm just going to break into my art gels because we're going to mix some custom shades. So on my my nails here, I've mixed kind of this. Um, Kind of teal blue I've mixed almost like a corally pink and then I've got this soft yellow so just using a few of these shades we're gonna mix our own custom shades first one I'm gonna do I think is the the corally color or sorry the the teal color so I've got my blue and my green here and I'm also going to mix in some white because I want all of these colors to be a bit softer so the base um, is mostly going to be white and then I'm just going to use a little bit of each of my blue and my green. Now remember, this product is super pigmented, so a little does go a long way. I tend to always mix too much color, but the good news is, is if you have containers that are um, solid color like black, or if you have uh, little containers that are white that you can put a lid on, you can actually save the colors that you mix. So you don't have to get rid of them. I'm just going to try and not mix too much because I don't have any containers on hand today. So we've got a little bit of my white here. Next I'm going to go in with some of my green. Actually I'm going to start with my blue first because I do want it to be more blue than green. So let's start with blue and just a friendly reminder with darker colors they will kind of overtake the white so a little does go a long way. So we're just mixing that blue in with my white creating this nice kind of sky blue. But I do want that kind of greeny aqua um, turquoise kind of tint to it so I'm just gonna wipe off my um, duck paddle here I'm using the spatula end of my duck paddle and we're gonna pick up a little bit of green and we're gonna start mixing that in there and we're creating this really pretty teal kind of color now the art gels are really versatile in the fact that um, they're beautiful for art. You can also use them as a full color over an enhancement if you choose to. Um, I personally, um, I don't know if I would wear them over just a natural nail. I have worn them over enhancements and they wear really beautifully. Um, but again, just like our gel polishes and our other products, a little does go a long way. So applying it sparingly, making sure it's cured all the way through. Um, and they mix beautifully with our gel polish too, which I'll show you in a minute here. So I'm pretty happy with that shade of teal that we've got, or what would you call that? Honestly, Natasha, that's a gorgeous, it is definitely Isn't it pretty? Teal. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it's really pretty. I love it. Next, these two colors are some of my favorites from our Art Gel line. So we've got our, our nice orange here, and this pink. And I'm not even like a big pink person on my own nails, but man, oh man. Oh, I know it's that gorgeous. pink is so pretty. So again, I'm going to make sure that my spatula is nice and clean before I dip it in my white. We're going to pick up some white art gel, maybe a little bit more, okay, and then I'm going to start with, um, I'm going to start with my pink and then I'll add a little bit of orange. So grabbing some of that pink, same thing, a little bit goes a long way, especially when you're only mixing a little bit of product. So I don't have tons of pink on my spatula because I do want it to be a softer shade. So we're just going to mix that pink in there, just that little bit tinted that quite nicely. And I do have some on my palette or my spatula, so I'm just going to mix that in here. Now I'm going to first wipe the excess off because I don't want to waste any product. And then I'm going to go into my orange and we're going to add a little bit of orange and that's going to create the um, coral color. So um, if you're not... If you're not overly um, familiar with mixing colors, it's always helpful to look at a color wheel too and see which colors make what and which is complementary. Um, sometimes I just go for it and hope for the best. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
Okay, so I think I may have mixed a little bit too much orange in here, so I'm going to go back to my pink in a second once I've mixed this a little bit more and just add a little bit more pink. So it's a little bit too on the orange side of coral for me. I'm a person that likes my corals a little bit more on the pink side. That's always one of those colors I find, mm -hmm. hey? So Working 100%. in the salons and stuff. 100%. Everybody has their opinion as to what coral is. Is it more pink or more orange for you guys? For me, it's definitely more pink. Okay. <laughs> for you, it's more orange? I feel like maybe so. Yeah? Now, now that I'm thinking about it, but yeah. I'm not sure. I feel I'm not a pro at colors like you are, so... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just that little extra bit of pink kind of shifted it a little bit. It was a little bit too orange for me personally, but I think I'm happy with that. Now at this point too, if you wanted it a little bit more neon, you could always add one of our um, like our neon pinks instead of the um, the pink art gel, um, just to give it a little bit more of a neon pop. But I don't want these too too vibrant. So now let's go ahead and we're gonna grab number one sixty seven gel polish and we're gonna make this beautiful lemon yellow a little bit softer using some more of our white art gel, which I've got here I think maybe. Everything looks the same. Oh, are you looking for white? Yeah, where did I, where did I? Um, yeah, there you go. Oh, okay. <laughs> I got my lids mixed up, that's why. Okay. Let's place my white down. Sure is handy having a great palette to work on. Oh my hey? gosh, this, yeah. yeah, it's really nice. And I like that there's no compartments on this or anything, so you can grab from other colors and mix all together in this, you know what I mean? That way they're not necessarily separated and if you wanted to mix colors and keep them separated then you could mix them and just space them out but sometimes when i'm working at home and i'm doing um like characters for instance and stuff my whole palette is all like like hundreds of colors i swear because i'm grabbing from other ones and mixing it's very convenient so we're just going to mix that um 167 is that right yeah 167 gel polish in with my art gel to create this beautiful pastel-y kind of yellow. Now we're ready to start painting our flowers. So before I go on to the nail and paint it on the nail, I'll show you guys, basically I'm, I'm really only doing kind of two petal shapes, if you want to even call it that. Um, this is another design where you don't really have to be precise. So let me just grab my palette. And I'll show you on my palette. I'll pick up some of our coral shade. So basically, I'm going to be doing petals that, like a single wide petal. And it's almost like square at the top. And then I just bring it down to create kind of a rectangle. But the edges are a little bit rounded. And then the next style will be similar to that. But it may be a little bit longer. But this one is going to have two parts. So I do the first part, kind of matches the other one, and then what I'll do is I'll come over here and kind of add on almost a little bit lower. So you can see those two kind of different petals, very similar, but we're gonna do varying lengths and widths of them. So you can see here, some of them are quite similar, some of them are shorter, some of them are longer. So basically just using that um, kind of style, creating the, uh, the flowers using those two petal types. Okay, I'll zoom in a little bit here. All right, so I'm gonna start. I tend to personally always start up near the cuticle area. We're gonna do some larger flowers. So we've got three colors, so I have to kind of keep that in mind when I'm um, putting my flowers down, because um, I don't necessarily want two colors of the same side by side. So let's start with our first petal. I'm gonna make this one a little bit longer. A little bit wider. And of course, the larger you want your flower, the larger you'll make your petals. But you guys can see over the white here, that coverage is so pretty. This is just a thin, thin layer of our art gel and it's got great coverage. You can't see any of that white peeking through. I'm gonna do another petal here. This one's gonna be a little bit longer. I'm gonna join it. I kind of, with this style um, flower, I kind of always make sure that the outer edges are a little bit straight. Um, and I'm just pulling towards the center. I'm going to add my little add-on here, so I'll come down a little bit. 
pull that out, create that kind of rounded end of a rectangle and pull that inwards towards the center of the flower. This brush I'm using is our painter brush. This is our first painter brush. So it's longer than the painter two that we just released. Um, but I will be switching to the painter two later on, which has quickly become one of my, my favorites. New favorite brush? Yeah, I think so. That one and the detailer too. They're just, I mean, all of our brushes are great for different things, but as an art girl, for sure, I very much, um, love the detailer too and the painter too. They're two must haves for me for sure. What's your favorite sculpting brush, Christabel? Um, that's a great question. I think number 10, to be yeah. honest. I think I started with the number eight, but yep. then, you know, in a class I took, I guess the only brush was available was a 10 at the time. Okay. So I kind of got used to the 10 and it just depends on what I'm doing, but I really like the number 10. Yeah, I can see that. I think 10's kind of versatile too, in mm -hmm. the sense that it's not too small and it's not too large. Exactly. Okay, so I'm just I'm using um, just a little piece of paper towel here to wipe off the excess product off my brush. I'm going to apply some um, tacky top to my palette, and I'm just going to quickly cleanse any of that excess residual product out here, just because I don't want to start mixing the colors. Um, so I'm just going to wipe that wipe off the excess and then we can go into our new color yeah um, Anya um, she said she just used the um, the painter too is amazing used it today on an ornament for a new stiletto design Ooh. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you posted that yet but I can't wait I to can't see. wait to see I love your stilettos they're amazing no they're so beautiful <laughs> I love them all right so we're gonna do our blue flower here and just looking this like I know we've talked about before watching somebody like color something in or polish something but even painting with these art gels and just seeing the coverage is so satisfying. Mm -hmm. And that pale blue, wow. Isn't that pretty? You guys, I love this blue. We can alter it more and add a little bit more green. Mm -hmm. So again, this these flowers are just made up really of two basic um, petal shapes of varying lengths, lengths and widths. 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 <laughs> funny my my most um, half of my family is my dad's side of my family is French Canadian and in French they don't have th together in any words so to hear them try and say like put th together it's always ta. oh really ta. oh that's wit wits wits it's so cute oh I love that <laughs> <laughs> okay so we've got our blue flower so basically what I'm doing is I'm just going to get um and this is depending on the size of the nail and the size of the flowers that you're doing um, I'm going to get, I want to make sure I get e um, at least one flower of each color on the nail. So I've done pink, I'm going to do, or the coral, I've done the blue, now I'm going to do the yellow. And then we'll go back after and fill in any spaces um, that may need, um, like even just one petal or half a flower kind of thing, um, just to fill in any gaps. So it doesn't just look like we have three randomly placed flowers. We want to look like it's a pattern that carries off of the nail as well. Okay, longer guy here. And at first it probably looks like I'm picking up a lot of product on my brush, but I'm then kind of using that on the rest of the nail and, and moving it around. So I'm creating a nice even coat. Um, again, we wanna make sure that we apply in even coats to make sure that um, the product is cured um, all the way through. Bonnie Michelle says, hi beautiful lady, miss you. Oh, Bonnie. I miss you too. I hope you're doing well. I think I saw today on Facebook that Bonnie is getting duckies. Ducks? Yeah. Oh. She posted a picture of little duckies in um, a sink with flowers all around them. No way. And I think from that picture, I'm pretty sure that's what I gather, that she's getting some duckies. I want duckies. They're so cute. <laughs> okay, so you can see here... Main focus of the, from the nail so far is this big coral flower up here. Then I've got a half of a blue one and half of a yellow one here. And we also have to keep in mind that for space filler, we are going to have these black stems coming out too. So you don't necessarily have to fill all the space with flowers because we will have little random things coming off here and there. Ivory says you're so good at placement. I oh, agree. thank you. Thank you so much. It's all about balance but not necessarily symmetry I think 
I like it to be all over the place. <laughs> and I think that comes with practice too, the more you yeah. do, and it depends on the design as For well. sure, and that's right. There's always, there's... I don't know how to say it, but it definitely is, it depends on the design for sure. Okay, so this area down here, because it's opposite here, I'd obviously I don't want to put a blue and a yellow flower down here. So we're just going to probably do one, um, one petal down here just to fill in and give it a little bit more color down at the end here, or the, the free edge, I mean the end. <laughs> Bonnie says yes, and chicks. Oh, Aww. <laughs> little chickies. Okay, maybe right here I'll put just a little smidge of a petal. A very technical term. A little smidge. No worry, Jade. Um, Natasha just just started. She has custom mixed our art gel, so she's just gonna she's just doing a demo on the flowers. But we will definitely have this saved so you can. Go back and rewatch the beginning of it. Absolutely. Yeah, anytime we do a live, it's always um, posted right on the Ugly Duckling Facebook wall, and then um, it does get eventually uploaded to our YouTube channel also. And of course, you guys too, if you guys ever have any questions of stuff that we've done on here or questions in general about the product or um, procedure or anything like that, we're always happy to help. So never be afraid to reach out to us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you guys can see I've done this whole nail so far and I haven't even flash cured it and nothing has moved. And that's one other thing of a long list of things that I really love about our art gel is that the formula is super um, pigmented, it's very creamy to work with, and it stays put. So it's really ideal for line work as well because you can put down your lines, your the thinnest lines you can think of, and you can confidently know that they're not going to move anywhere. Um, and you'll be able to keep working and then cure it, and they'll be just as thin as when you laid them down. So I'm going to pop that in the lamp for a cure here. And Christabel, how long do we cure our art gel for? 60 seconds. You got it. <laughs> I like the question. Good answer. <laughs> okay, so I'm sorry, I'm just gonna put my, my lid back on here. Allison says she is, a, her lunch is almost over. She has to go for a meeting, but that's okay because she'll watch the live at the end. Aw, well thank you. Thanks for popping in and I hope you had a good lunch. And thank you for always joining us. Yeah, I know, you're so <laughs> wonderful. Okay. I've used this brush many times since we launched it, so I'm just going to kind of, I want to prep it a little bit. I did clean it properly and store it, but even just to kind of almost reactivate it or something, I kind of put it in a little bit of the um, tacky top, and then I'll just wipe off the excess and roll my brush back into a nice point. So Natasha, a question for you. Sure. For those who maybe have brush cleaning questions. Yes. You really don't ever need to use a cleanser or alcohol at all to clean your brushes. Honestly. Unless not really unless you are like the only time i will use a cleanser is if i've used one of our art gels as like a full coverage right. color um with our gel brush because then i find it does kind of get into the bristles of the brush mm -hmm. then i will use um our gel cleanse um to wipe out the excess but then i will go right in right away to my palette with some gel um depending on the brush i'm using if it's my gel brush i'll use some sculpting gel some clear sculpting gel and work that gel back into the brush just to, um, um, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for, but just to kind of get that gel bra um, back in there to make sure it really holds the shape of my brush and it's keeps the brush conditioned. Yeah, exactly. Conditioned. Cool. Thank you. No problem. And Ivory asked if uh, you wiped the dispersion layer off the cured white and you did not. No, I didn't. I'm working right over. So I did two coats of the um, number 44 gel polish, our white gel polish. I didn't cleanse anything. I just went, went, went. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Too much, too much information to oh, say. <laughs> oh my gosh! I went right in over the inhibition layer and just um, started painting. And the brushes, um, Joan, that Natasha are, have used so far is the painter and the painter too. She's just going to start with. Yes, and I'm also using our duck paddle, our trusty duck paddle. Um, I'm not too sure. I know we have some veteran duckies in watching today. I'm sure. So some of you may know, some of you may not know. The duck paddle is another great tool to have. Um, it's got this awesome spatula on one end that's great for removing product from um, gel specifically from the pots and then and, and mixing also. 
And then the other end has this really great spoon on it, so it's great for um, picking up acrylic liquid, or acrylic liquid. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, it's definitely Thursday. <laughs> Um, acrylic powder. I do a lot of sugar designs as well, so this is a great little scoop for picking up the um, the colored acrylic or the glitter or your clear acrylic and sprinkling on. So this is a great multi-use tool also. Julia, Spencer just popped in because I'm late, but <gasps> Hi! In. those are adorable. I got my new painter too and can't wait to use it tomorrow on my clients. You all are such an inspiration to me. Oh, well, thanks. thanks. So sweet. Thank you. That's really sweet. And I hope you like the brush as much as we do. So now, you guys, I'm going to take my a paint or two, and we are going to do the white section of each flower. Super simple. Um, I'm just picking up some of my white art gel here with my paint or two. I'm picking up a little blob. We're going to place it roughly where the center of the flower would be and doing a rough kind of... Um, some somewhat circular shape doesn't have to be perfect uh, by any means it's actually going to help us because we're actually going to pull some product out to kind of almost make it look like um folds in in the petal near the center of the flower so i'll just i'm just going to lay down all of the um the white first now when i'm on the side of the nail i'm really making sure that i'm not applying it thick i'm, I'm making sure i'm not applying it thick anywhere really um, but especially on the side of the nail because we don't really want it to bulge out or bump out um, and misshape the side of the nail a little bit here again a little goes a long way now these guys here, this one here and this one here is definitely just like one in a tiny bit petal. So we're not even going to see the center of the flower. The center of the flower is over here off the nail somewhere. So we're not going to worry about that. So now just using existing product that's on my brush. At this point, if I was working on a client, I would get them to flip their hand over because I'm working over here. I'm a righty and I'm going to pull this way. So it's just easier for me if they'd flip their hand over. Um, and we're going to just kind of pull outwards a little bit and kind of just flick. All I'm basically doing is when I put my brush, the point of my brush, into the existing product, I'm slightly pushing down to kind of mush it out a little bit, and then I'm quickly pulling my brush outwards and lifting up, and that's creating kind of a little point pulling outwards. I hope that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we're going to go around, and I don't have to worry about it being spaced perfectly or the flicks being perfect. I may pull just the the actual circle out a little bit in some areas so it's not so symmetrical and even. Okay, same thing on the sides here. We're just pulling that existing product out. And see, and if you are being adventurous like I am and not flash curing or curing in between, just be mindful of the product on the sides because you will smush it. Mm -hmm. Which so far, you guys. I mean, the demo's not done, but so far I haven't spilt anything. I haven't smushed anything. So okay. far. <laughs> so far. Knock on wood. <laughs> okay, I'm popping that in the lamp for a cure here. Um, and then again, just going back to my palette, cleaning my brush with some fresh talk, uh, tacky top. Rolling that brush out. And putting it back into shape. So that my brush will keep its shape for years to come you guys by doing this and taking care of my brushes i have some of the brushes that we originally launched with um ugly duckling yeah, yeah. That's so amazing. if you keep take care of your brushes you'll have them for a really long time next we are going to use the dotting end tool of my blinger of course, if you have our Omni tool, this will work great for that too, because it has a super duper tiny end on the Omni tool. It has super, um, almost like a needle point. Not quite. It still has a dotting tool, but it's pretty tiny. So now that we've cured our white here, we are going to create the very center. I guess this would be where the pollen is. I know it has a very technical name. I can never remember it. So this is, we're calling it pollen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm taking my black art gel. This is such a dark it's so it's so pigmented i just i love it okay i'm taking my spatula again of my dawn or oh my gosh you guys you'll have to replay this and watch it back to and even understand what i'm trying to say my <laughs> spatula end of my duck paddle and we've got some black on my palette now 
we are going to take the dotting in tool of my blinger and we're going to just do kind of like a half circle so i put a dot down i'll just gently drag it and create that kind of shape so like you, a being almost you are making the inside of the flower which is called the pistol is that what it's called <laughs> did you google it <laughs> <laughs> she's taking her glasses off and she's looking underneath her glass or over top of her glasses at me you're creating the pistol thank you so much christina or christical crown okay that's so funny okay so this is the pistol i'm pretty sure that's what google says. yeah i think you're right the google's always right yeah. so <laughs> got a little heavy here with my black so i'm just gonna pick some off because we want to make sure that cures nicely now I'm coming over here on the side and same thing. We're just doing a little bit of the black here because I still want some of that white to show through. So realistically, we're just gonna see mostly that pistil of that flower, but we're gonna see a lot of the stems. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm gonna go back to my um, Painter 2 brush and we're gonna create the stems of the flowers. Now you'll see here, they start off thicker and then they come thinner near when they actually reach the flower. Now I also have to mention, I didn't originally come up with this pattern. I was inspired by a photo online that I saw on Pinterest. So um, I'm going to post these on my Instagram later also, and I will um, look back and make sure that I tag the original person that I got um, inspiration from, because it's always really, really important to tag people um, that you've been inspired by. Um, so I thought this was beautiful. I wanted to recreate it and share it with you guys, but I definitely will. Um, I have it written down somewhere, I think, in my notes. Um, when I post it on Instagram, I'll be sure to tag the original artist, too. Yeah, okay. that's a good point to make, because I know Thanks. a lot of people don't realize uh, to always give credit to the original artist. Yeah, it's, yeah. And, yeah especially people that are newer to the industry, yeah. too. Sometimes it's hard to um, know, like, social media etiquette and that kind of stuff, so I always try, even, there's been times where I actually have copied, um, like, fabric designs from Pinterest, and I've looked and tried to see who originally, like, um, designed the, the pattern for the fabric to kind of tag them, too, because they work hard on that, so we want to give them cre credit where credit's due for sure. Okie dokie, so, you could do this one of two ways, depending on how you're feeling and how much coffee you've had. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to load my brush and I like to start um, at the base of the, um, the very bottom of the stem. So that way I can push hard, not hard, hard, but push, make more pressure. And then I'll release pressure as I pull up towards the flower. If you're feeling brave and you haven't had a lot of coffee, you can do the opposite. You can apply your brush um, near the petal or the flower, light pressure. And as you pull down, apply more pressure to push that brush open a little bit more and make a wider line. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of product on my brush here. And I want this stem to kind of start down here and come upwards. And again, just like the petals, we're going to make these varying um, lengths. So let's pick up a little bit of black here. I'm going to press down and I'll kind of slightly wiggle back and forth to make the um, base a little bit wider. And I'm going to, I'm holding my brush a little bit more vertical. So that way most of the pressure is on the very tip of the brush. I'm just gonna pull up and as I'm pulling up, I'm releasing that pressure. Now, obviously that is too much, that's too dramatic of um, a difference in the width. So I'm just gonna come back down here where I, I've made um, the initial width, I guess. And I'm going to start pulling up some of that product just to bring it out a little bit more up here so it doesn't look as um, dramatic of a difference. Pull it up to that flower. Hmm, I've had a bit of coffee today, you guys. It's all right, we'll just make this one a little bit wider. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna come over here and we are going to pretend that there is you know what, let's do the main ones first and then we can see where we need filler. That's the, a good rule of thumb to go by. See where you do what you know needs to be done first and then you can go back and add filler. Um, this one, let's make this one a little short guy. Or shorter. Start at the bottom, add pressure, and as I pull upward towards the flower, I'm going to release that pressure 
to make it a little bit more skinny. I have to say your inspiration is flowers. You love flowers. I love flowers. I always go back to flowers you for always sure. Do such an amazing job. Well, thanks. That's okay. definitely my my fave. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then this one, we'll start over here and pull towards that flower. And you guys can see, I forgot to mention, but I'm going in between where the petals kind of open up. So there's a point here where the petals meet. I'm going to pull that stem into that point. Same with here and same with here. It just makes sense to me that that's where the petal or the stem would come out from rather than in the center of a petal. So we've got a little space over here. So let's make a stem, but coming um, from the nail and outwards, pretending that there's a flower down here. So I'm going to press my brush down and pull downwards. And as I'm pulling, I'm releasing that pressure to make it a little, um, to make it start to taper. And then over here, same thing. Let's add another one. Okay. Pull down. I need a little bit more product on my brush to wipe some of that black off. So we're just going to add a little bit more. There we go. Maybe a tiny one here. And then maybe a little smidge of one here. And basically, just look at your nail as you're painting it and just see, um, make sure that it's balanced. Like it, Christina said, though, that's going to come as you do more nail art and that sort of thing you'll kind of be able to recognize okay it looks empty over here or too heavy over here so that'll come but i think i'm happy with that i don't think i would fit anything else anywhere i couldn't fit anything else oh, for, forget it <laughs> <laughs> i couldn't fit anything else in there anyways is what i'm trying to say so i'm gonna <laughs> pop that in the lamp we're going to do a, how long of a cure again, Crystal? 60 seconds. Thank you so much. In Natasha's defense, she has been uh, pulling double duty to Rob's <laughs> this week, so that makes complete sense. <laughs> My brain is not here. <laughs> okay, so the black, this is a great example. It's very pigmented, so we are going to work that brush in our clean top coat here. And you may not be able to see on camera right now, but it is working itself out of those bristles. And it's going to give me a nice clean brush to work with next time I go to paint a design. I'm just working that back and forth. And I'm never pushing down right on the head. We don't want to splay the brush bristles or bend them in any way. I'm going um, with the direction of the hair. And just gently working that in. Now I'm going to come over here on a clean space of my palette and just roll off the excess. Roll that brush back into shape. And pop the lid on so it's safe until I need it next time. There we go. How's everybody doing? Good. Okay, so for top coat, we are going to go ahead and we are going to use our no wipe top coat today. One of my favorites for sure. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to seal this. Now it also looks great matte. I on my um, display set here. I do. I did have some of them that were matte. Um, I can always show a close up again before we're done. And I'm just going over this. Now, I've shared this tip before, and you may need it again sometimes, so I always like to say it. If you're hand painting something and you find that you've applied your design a little bit too thick, and there are some bumps or some dips on the nail, you can always go in with our tacky top before you actually seal with your final top coat, whether that's no wipe or matte, or if you want to do a second coat of the tacky top. If you prefer the tacky top as your top coat, not a problem. Doing one layer of tacky top and curing that helps fill in any grooves or dips and it just creates a smoother surface for when you go and apply your top coat. So I'm going to go ahead and cure this for 60 seconds as our gel polish and as our art gel. And our nail is done. It's amazing. So an easy peasy, Crystal, I, I, you, you feel comfortable doing something like this? It's, it's interesting you say because I was going to say like I'm not a hand painter but mm -hmm. Natasha you make it look so easy. And that design is very effective, mm -hmm. but something that someone who maybe is, cha is challenged against art, nail yeah. art, or, you know. Maybe doesn't. I feel like when we do did demos and stuff, we're going to do different kinds of demos, but I feel like yeah. showing, like, especially salon style art that is 
um, quick and easy for people to do and maybe people yes. that like you were saying are not necessarily comfortable with art you guys saw we created all of these flowers just by using two different shapes of petals and they're pretty much the same petal it's just this one is single and then we doubled it up on this one so by using these two simple petal shapes you can create a really fun floral pattern uh, for your clients this summer okay there we go. We are all done. Amazing, Natasha. Thanks, you guys, for joining us this afternoon. And just to remind you, if you wanted to pick up any of these uh, products, if you don't have them in your Ugly Duckling collection as of yet, our art gels are on special for the month of July for 15% off. It's amazing. Yeah. Good. And you can try out this wonderful technique that Natasha just shared. I'm excited because I feel like I'm going to try it out and everything yeah. you do, just kind of, you know, work with it because I'm not a hand painter like you are, mm -hmm. and this design is very cool. Well, I'm, I'm excited, Amazing. and I hope you guys try it too, and if you do, be sure to tag um, me and Ugly Duckling on Instagram yes. and on Facebook, wherever you post it. We always love to see your work with Ugly Duckling products. And I think that's it for me. Crystal, did you have anything else you wanted I to think, touch on? Um, yeah, if you want to go over the art, or the colors. Sure. Uh, or sorry, the... um. The glitter ones. Oh, on. yeah. She's just going to pull them out for me. Um, but just to... Oh, perfect. She's got it there. Okay, so the first one... Let me just open it first here. I think this one is probably my fate. My pers well, it's hard because they're all really pretty. It is hard, isn't it? And I'm not just saying that. Okay, so we've got our rose gold one here. This is so gorgeous. One thing to keep in mind, you guys, if you do have our color gels, our glitter color gels, is that they are a little bit more sensitive to light. So you want to um, just take a little bit out if you're going to be working with it and avoid having your jar open for too long because you don't want to risk um, any issues with any product curing. So this is our rose gold. Gorgeous. So pretty. And, it, and because it's so pigmented, Natasha, you can use it as a color if you wanted to yes. polish it on. Yes, a million percent. Yeah. I've, I've used this on some press-on sets for some um, for some people, and the co coverage is really, really beautiful. Let me just wipe my spatula here quickly. Next, we've got our silver. Just getting in here. We've got our gorgeous silver. Man, oh man, it's so, it's like, it's okay. like. Oh yeah, you're just mixing. Yeah. Good. Oh, Is that yeah, okay? No, just to see. Yeah, no, you're perfect. Yeah. Now that's reflective. Oh my god. It's <laughs> so pretty. I love it. And it, it, because it's so fine. Yeah. When it goes on, you can paint super fine lines. Yes. You still have the detail of that um, metallic. Work. Absolutely. And I think actually, now that I think of it, we do have, we should have, uh, if memory serves me right, we have a video on our YouTube channel. Um, of when we launched the um, the glitter art gels, and I, I think it's actually shown in the video that you can create really fine lines with it. I could be mistaken, but um, it should be on YouTube. Next, we've got our gold, and this is not like a, a traditional yellow, yellow gold. It's still a yellow gold, but it's not, I still think it's like almost like a soft yellow. Yeah. It's I, very a very flattering color. I prefer that. For yeah, sure. I like this shade for sure. So it's a nice, soft, um, traditional gold. Not too yellow. Yeah, beautiful. So 12, Gorgeous. we have 12 colors currently in our art gel. Yes. And you can in, intermix them, create custom shades mm -hmm. like Natasha just did. So really, your palette is endless. Absolutely. You can mix them with our... Um, the other art gels, you can mix them with gel polish, you can mix them with our color gels. Um, so really, like Christina said, it's, it's um, limitless. So I think that about covers it today for us. Is that all you have, Crystal? I think that's it for questions. All right. Well, thank you so much, you guys, for joining us again for another afternoon. We had fun with you as always. And if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call or email us at contact at uglyducklingnails.com. Yes, that sounds awesome. wonderful. All right, until next time, we'll see you guys later. Have a good day. Bye.